So as I mentioned, on the uh, recent trip back from the USA to Australia, I took the opportunity to make lots of short videos and uh, I'll just discuss another point and that was uh, what happened when we crossed the equator. You'll see GPS-1 there showing just north of the equator and literally a second or two later we actually crossed into the southern hemisphere. Now the flight management system on our aircraft, it has a database of virtually every airport in the world that is capable of uh, taking our aircraft, so anything more than about 5,000 feet runway length. Now the other thing you can do is you can input what's called a pilot waypoint and you can do that for any custom latitude and longitude you want. And what I did was just prior to crossing the equator, I created a pilot waypoint and called it S Pole for the South Pole. And I put it at uh, south 90 degrees and east 00 degrees 00, zero minutes. Okay, so that's the South Pole. Now, as we crossed the equator, I then went into the flight management system, which has a lot of different features. And one of them is crossing points where you can determine your present position to any of the waypoints in the system, whether it be pilot waypoint or in the database, and it will give you the instantaneous distance from your current position to that point. So let's just have a look at some uh, basic math here. We know that on our globe, one degree of latitude is 60 nautical miles. Now that doesn't change from the North Pole to the South Pole. One degree of latitude is always 60 nautical miles. It's the longitude that converges towards the poles. Now, if we're going from the equator to either pole, we're traversing 90 degrees of latitude. So quite simple math tells us that 60 times 90 should equal 5,400 nautical miles. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at in the video. At the point we cross the equator, I'm going to do a distance measurement from our present position to the South Pole, and we can see just how close that will be to 5,400 nautical miles. And the other part of the video, uh, what I've done here is, uh, if you'll have a look at the list of airports in Antarctica, you'll see there's a whole list there, and uh, they have the ICAO code. The one we're specifically interested in is um, Bud Coast Wilkesland, which is uh, Yankee Whiskey Kilo Sierra. Now that Yankee is for an Australian uh, airport, and the WKS is for the actual name of the runway itself. So. What we'll do also from that position is we'll put in that runway and we can see what the distance is to uh, to the airport that serves um, Casey Station, which is one of the Australian Antarctic stations. And just to expand a little bit more on my earlier video about WGS84 and these instrument approaches, you'll see that Wilkins Antarctica is actually in the Jefferson database as an airport. Okay, it's got the uh, latitude and longitude and the uh, airport elevation, and then it has a specific GPS RNAV approach. Okay, so that's actually in the database, and it's in our aircraft FMS database. So from our crossing point on the equator, we can actually measure the distance to this airport. Okay, and you'll see it's got the uh, airport elevation, it's got the, uh, the type of approach as necessary. So let me just run the actual in-flight video, and uh, it's just, um, more evidence that the shape of the Earth is absolutely what uh, WGS84 says it is. You know, it's uh, 5,400 nautical miles from the equator to the South Pole. And you can measure that yourself accurately in uh, Google Earth Pro. Just draw a uh, ruler line from the equator to the South Pole. It's going to also show you 5,400 nautical miles. 